Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm hanging out here with Wes again. You guys remember Wes? And let me just say, I believe in focusing on the solution and not the problem. Look here, Kevin. You know, it's day after day of the same old shit. Fucking drive here, drive there. Fucking traffic here. Traffic fucking there. Fucking traffic everywhere. You know, Kevin, we gotta do something about this. We gotta get right. So today we want to talk to you about a concept that he and I both agree on, which is pretty cool. It's the idea of once you know the rules to the game, the game gets a lot easier to play. And it can be any game, you know, we can be talking about the game of life, the game of basketball, the game of chess. But once you start to understand the rules of what, you know, what you need to do to win, isn't it a lot easier to win? You know, like, how do you feel about that? Uh, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, if you're trying to play any game, like you said, life, basketball, anything, it's extremely hard to play if you don't know the rules. If you're trying to play a blind, you're not, you're not going to win really. You might have some lucky shots. You might get a little farther ahead than you would have expected. But once you know the rules, it's a lot easier to figure out how to be better at it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when we were talking about this earlier today, I told Marlon a little story about myself when I was younger. Uh, when I was around 16 years old, I got really depressed. I didn't have a lot going on for me. You know, I just kind of like fell into a slump for a few months at a time. And I felt like I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't good enough, I wasn't tall enough, you know, I wasn't, I didn't know how to talk to girls, I didn't know how to do anything, you know, a lot of just 16 year old drama I had. Yeah, I remember those days. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I stumbled upon, um, there's a book and a movie, uh, it's called The Secret. And that was really what got me into things like positive thinking and metaphysics and manifesting your own reality. And that kind of opened the door from 16 to the age of now, I'm at 23, of how to shift my life in a more positive manner and just, you know, go with the flow. And it kind of was a, a rule book, a kind of a guideline of where I wanted to be and how to set myself up for who I want to be in the future. You know, I want to make my role model, not anybody who is real, but me 10 years from now. Nice. And chasing after me. That's sick. I like that. And always trying to set yourself up to be the role model. So when you look back 10 years, you're like, yeah, I'm where I want to be. But always pushing yourself further to be your next role model. You know, be the, the parent that you're, you like wish you had. Be, a, you know the role model you wish you were when you were a kid. You know what's funny? Earlier today, a buddy of mine asked me a question. He said, hey, how are you always so calm? Because right now I'm in the middle of starting a business. And he's just like, how are you so calm? And I told him, I'm just looking. I know what the end goal looks like. Mm -hmm. So all this stuff that's happening in between is kind of meaningless because I know what the end goal is. I know, I always have my eye on the finish line. So the entire race in the middle is all really just kind of the same thing because I know that the finish line is where I'm going to no matter what happens in between, that's still where I'm going to be. That finish exactly. line is, you know, like being able to look into the future. So it's cool that you're saying being able to look at yourself because that's one of the rules a lot of people don't know. If you want to get there, it doesn't happen on accident. You have to actually know to look at where you want to go. And that's why people are like, yo, how did... Bill Gates become Bill Gates? How did Michael Jordan become Michael Jordan? They made up their mind on where they wanted to go, yes. who they wanted to be. And that's one of the rules. That's a rule that a lot of people aren't taught. You know, in school, we're supposed to be taught this, or your parents are supposed to teach you this. But clearly, when I look out into the world and I see people that are still 30 and 40 and 50 years old and they're still lost, clearly they were not taught this. Yeah. So, you know, we're trying to do our job of teaching. So if anyone's out there watching this, if you want to get something in your life, make up your mind first. Figure out where it is you want to be, who you want to be. And that's kind of rule one. Yeah. You'll start to get yourself there. Trust me. Have your finish line planned. Plan five years down the road, ten years down the road. Always be looking ahead. It doesn't matter what path you take to get there. You know, it's kind of like skiing or snowboarding. It doesn't matter how you get there, but you will end up at the bottom of the mountain. 
Facts. So if it feels like, oh, this isn't going to help me in my end goal. This isn't where it's so supposed to be going. This isn't part of my five or 10 year plan. Go with it. You never really know what's going to help you get there. You might hit a roadblock one day that something from a few years ago that was totally meaningless has now taught you the lesson to get past this roadblock again. Um, Steve Jobs, the creator of Apple. When he was 15 or 16, he went to Harvard. He was such a brilliant mind. He went to Harvard and took college classes. But he was a young kid. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He took a class on calligraphy, you know, writing and like cursive. He took a class on that. When he was older and developed the computer, built his first Mac, he used what he learned in calligraphy to design the first, like, typings on the computer, which I thought was a brilliant story. Something that he thought was totally meaningless in his life came back around 10 years later and totally solved the problem on what to make the first fonts on the very first Apple computer. The very first Macintosh. And you know what's funny? If you guys look back to episode 9, we actually touched on this with saying as you climb the mountain, all the mistakes you learn on the way yep. help you to climb the second mountain the second time around. Yes. Although those mistakes and lessons learned didn't apply for mountain number one, you might find at mountain number two or mountain number three, oh crap, that thing I learned on mountain number one is actually very useful here. Oh yeah. All right? So we're not gonna talk your errors off too much on this one, <laughs> and I gotta go get some lunch because I gotta go work a class in a minute. So, you know, thanks for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you watching this video. And let us know how you feel. Put something in the comments below. Click like, subscribe, and send this to a friend if you think they need to hear this. Or maybe you need to hear this and you want to tell me about it or tell Wes about it. Let us know. Seriously. So until next time, guys. See you later. That was fun. Yeah, that was a good one. I like that. I think.